Well, <clears throat> I don't even know what to call this video. If I'm going to call it a tasting session or something else. I don't know. But what we're doing <coughs> is we're smoking that GLP's Haddo's Delight. Now, I made a video, I don't know how long ago, um, about, I think it's like five, uh, you know, five popular blends that, that I think uh, are trash. And Haddo's Delight was on the list. Um, I think, I don't remember for sure the other, I, I, I want to say Penzance was on the list. Um... What else is on the list? Maybe, maybe Barbary Coast was on the list. And I said popular, just, I basically just went into tobacco reviews. I, I took some, some blends that, uh, that I knew I didn't like, that I knew, you know, were recommended by a lot of people. Went into tobacco reviews and if they had more than a certain number of stars with, you know, a decent amount of reviews, you know, a hundred or whatever, then I, um, would consider them for the list. So I don't remember, pretty sure Penzance was on that list, um, but I don't remember the other ones. But I, I do, uh, Hedos Delight was definitely on that list. Um, and I know I kind of talked about this in my last video, spoiler alert, again, I still don't like it. Um, this tin is from March of 2011, and I bought it in April of 2011. Um, so I've had it for a long time. It's it's 12 years old. I will say that it's not as bad as I remember, and I think that's probably due to the age, because one of the big reasons I don't like it is the topping that's on it. Um, or whatever it's flavored with or something. I don't know. I just don't like... It's like chemically, it's kind of, it's kind of grapey, kind of boozy, but like just, I, I don't know, I get like a weird chemical smell. And that chemical smell kind of, to me, translates into the, um, the smoke. Now generally, now I, I'm not a big fan generally of um, Cornell and Deal cuts. Um, I just don't think that their cuts are very good. Um, especially in these days, I feel like they've gotten a little, they've gotten better, but like back in like the early tens and before that, up until, I don't know, maybe even like 2014, 2016, just the cuts are just not what I prefer. Um, and so, and this is a good example of that. I mean, I'm pulling out a little ribbon of, a little, pulling out a ribbon of Virginia here. And I'm going to show you guys kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, it's just like, that's one piece. It's like... I don't know. I mean, I feel like, I feel like, you know, uh, rolling this up and with some other stuff and pinching it together and putting it in my lip. I mean, it's like Levi Garrett or something. I don't, I mean, it's, I just don't, I just, this isn't this. I don't want to harp on Cornell and deal too bad because I do like kind of, I do like what they do. I like that there's American companies that produce, even though I might not be a big fan that produce quality, you know, uh, tobacco, um, you know, in the U.S. I, I really do. I, I like that. I really like that idea. I think it's good for pipe smoking. I think it's good for, you know, cigars. I think it's good for those kinds of things. Um, but, man, I really, really wish. I mean, like... I think that I would like Cornell and Deal a lot more, just generally, um, if their cut was more like a European cut. And I get people are going to say, well, we're tr you know, they're trying to be different or 
you know, they don't want to just copy Europeans. And I'm, and if that, I mean, that may not be the case, but if it is the case, my, what I would say is why not? If what they do is good and it works and people like it, then why not do that? And then the reverse argument to that. And I realize I'm getting kind of rambly here, but just bear with me. That's probably what this video is going to be. Um, I, but I re realize the reverse argument to that is people are going to say, well, that they like the Cornell and Deal, you know, cut better than they like the European cut. Um, yeah, and that certainly might be true, but I just, I don't know. I'm just not a fan. There's just massive pieces in here. It, to me, it just seems unfinished. I mean, that's, I think, what it, I think that's the best way I can describe it. It's like, you look at it and you go, they forgot to do the final cut. You know? Like, I don't know if anyone else gets this feeling, but that's the feeling I get. They forget to do the final cut. They forgot to do the final cut. This uh, looks like a huge strand of Perique. Uh, to me, it's kind of, this is, it's, if I had to guess, and I'm not, I'm not an expert on, you know, picking out, you know, certain leaves. I think, in fact, that leaf I showed you earlier, I called it Virginia. I think it could possibly be, um, a Burley, but there's, you know, I mean, I, I find more stems. I gotta make sure that there's burly in this. I don't think, maybe there isn't. I don't know, I always thought there was burly in this. I remember people saying there's burly in this, but it's not saying it on the tin description. It's saying Virginia long cut Perique. So pretty sure that piece I held up a minute ago was that. A long cut perique, so I guess that kind of makes sense, right? That it's a it's supposed to be like that. It's a long cut, okay. And then unflavored black Cavendish and a little air cured ribbon, air cured ribbon. So that probably is that burly, um, which might have been that piece that I held up. But an air cured, you know, a piece of air cured ribbon. I'd be looking at more of like a chestnutty color. Something, you know, like a little bit darker than what I th I'm pretty sure what I held up earlier. It doesn't matter. I'm not a big fan of the cut. The smell just like hits you like chemicals almost. Like if you were to take like a cleaning agent that was, that smelled like red wine or something. Like, I don't know. It, it just, <laughs> try not to harp on it too bad. Um, I, I'm going to soften my approach a little bit and say that this is the the flavor is better than than what I remember. Is that a product of 12 years of aging? Possibly. Uh is am I is my palate more refined uh than it was last time I smoked it which was probably 8 to 10 years ago? Possibly. Um is it the pipe? Possibly. Speaking of pipe, uh, I kind of mentioned in my last video about a little eBay find. So this is it right here. And the guy that sold it to me actually subscribes uh, to the channel. So there it is. It's a little squat, little full bent squat tomato with like some sort of amber or something. I can't really figure out what the accent is, but it's like an amber color. Um, he said he smoked primarily Virginia's or Virginia Perique's out of it. Um, that's what I'm smoking in it right now. I've smoked it a few times. I know it's a, I know it's a pretty decent smoker, so. I don't know if it's going to stay a Virginia Perique, uh, pipe. Um, it might. It's a pretty wide bowl, pretty shallow bowl, which, um, I don't prefer for, like, flakes. Um, but I think for, like, you know, um, like a like a like a rough cut Virginia Perique or something like this, uh, I think it does pretty well. Um, I have a couple other wider sort of shorter bowls that that handle Virginia Perique pretty well, um, but it's kind of case by case. I've had good I've had really good luck with uh, wider shorter bowls. I've had really bad luck. So you just I usually when I get a new pipe I usually start it on Virginia Perique. 
if it looks like it's gonna be a decent smoker for that then I'll then I'll keep it there if it looks like it's not um, then I'll move it over and it'll be in my sort of either like a tester rotation or I'll smoke Orientals through it or Latakia blends but I don't know what's going on with this lighter. So, flavor. How does the light? To me, it just like kicks you in the face. I don't know if that's the Perique or not. I wouldn't think so because I've smoked high content Perique blends and not... Um, been displeased by them. I, I think it's honestly, I think it's just that, that flavoring, that casing, that whatever they do. They also say, um, what is else they say? An, ex an exclusive process then darkens and marries the mixture. I'm assuming they're talking about pressing it. I don't know what else. Um, I don't know what else they could do that would full, further darken and marry the mixture. I, I'm not sure. Maybe something other than pressing. I don't know. Maybe someone out there has some insight on what that might be, that exclusive process. Um, To me, it just sounds like a fancy way to say, um, you know, pressing, but I don't know, could be wrong. Maybe it's some sort of steaming, some sort of heat treatment could be, I don't know. Um, I kind of mentioned in my last video too, this blend just kind of kicks you in the face. You know, it's it doesn't really seem balanced. It just kind of like comes out and just kicks you in the face, kind of dances around, kicks you again. It's like... It's hard to nail down things that I like about it because um, I, it's just, it's, it's, it's elusive to me. And you know, that's fine. I mean, you can't like every blend that you try. You can't even be okay with every blend that you try. And the only reason why I'm smoking it again is because I found a 12 year old tin in the, in the cellar and I thought, well, might as well pull it out, open it up, give it a shot. If I don't like it, I'm gonna give it away, which is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give it away. So, if you made it this far in the video, appreciate you guys. Um, hit me up on Instagram, send me a direct message on Instagram. Uh, Instagram's Shallow Pockets. <laughs> I think it's 87. Yeah, Shallow Pockets 87. Um, on Instagram send me a direct message if you are interested in uh, receiving this I would prefer to for it to go to someone that hasn't tried it um, but I'm honestly I'm just probably just gonna wait like a week or two and then I'm just gonna pick someone at random based on my mood and then I'll and then it'll go to that guy so uh, you can send me a message on Instagram. You can comment down below um, in the video, in the YouTube. If you don't have an Instagram, comment down below, and we'll figure out a way to get in touch. Um, whether I email you or, or you email me, whatever, uh, we'll figure out a way to get in touch, um, and I'll and I'll get it out to you. But like I said, you know, I like I like to you know put it out there for like a week, let as many people get an opportunity to to hit me up. If you've tried Hado's Delight and maybe you didn't like it, but maybe you want to give it another shot, uh, you know, hit me up. Maybe, you know, it'll go to you. I don't know. Um, it's my, maybe not the most fair way, but at the same time, I don't want to say, well, I'm going to have a raffle or I'm going to have a drawing. And then a week later, I've only got one person that's hitting me up saying that they want it. So that doesn't really make sense. So I just, I figure I pick someone at random. I don't really know anybody. Um, you know, anyway, so at least I don't think so. So, uh, you know, I think it's, I think it's pretty fair. Um, 
And it's been a while since I've since I you know I gave some stuff away maybe like a year ago, so I th <clears throat> I think it's about time to give something give something away and it's better than throwing it away you know, so um, I mean, I will say it is really, it is really not as bad as I remember. Once you kind of get over the the initial harshness, the initial like in your face ness about it, it's really not as bad as I remember. Is it enjoyable for me? No. Um, I could see it being enjoyable for guys that are big time cigar smokers. You know, I smoke a cigar every once in a while, not very often. Um, I could see it being enjoyable for 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 uh, pipe smokers that really like like big bold in your face flavors you know Lakeland you know blends um, you know big time Latakia blends uh, things like that where it's not I mean it it like the tobacco like very much is in your face you don't have to search for it um, or the flavor. I don't want to say tobacco. I mean, because it's hard to tell what's what's the flavoring, the flavor, you know, the, the casing or topping, and then what's the tobacco. Um, I mean, I can taste a little bit of Virginia. Like, just every once in a while, you get a tiny bit of Virginia's. For me, it's mostly Perique and Burley. Is what I get mostly Perique and Burley. It's like that very earthy, a little bit spicy, sort of nutty, sort of acidic flavor, and then the the over then the over the top, minerally slash red winey kind of flavor. Um, I just don't prefer that. You know, I I don't prefer the the you know that flavor profile. I don't prefer this cut. I, I'm, I'm. I don't want to say I'm getting frustrated with Cornell and Dio, but I am like losing a little bit of patience of finding something that I'm gonna like because, like I said, the cut I can deal with if it's if it's like okay, this particular tin. I don't know. It seems to be like overly coarse. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Maybe I've been smoking too many European style Virginia Periques lately, um, which is very possible. But, um, you know, something like a long golden flake, you know, or a capstan, even a capstan ready rub, you know, it's like, oh, that's just, it's mm, perfect. Uh, I know we're like golden slice, the nice thin, you know, slices, they work good in a fold and stuff. You know, you can chop them up and kind of barely rub them out and make them more like a crumble. It's, it's just, I don't know. It just works so good. But you know, this is, it's just difficult to, it's overly difficult to work with in my opinion. I don't know. The hard part is, I, I, you know, I know these are my opinions, and there's a lot of people out there that probably think that I'm being crazy, and maybe I am, but, um, yeah, I just don't prefer it. So, there are some uh, Cornell and Deal blends that I like. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying Cornell and Deal. Um... I, you know, I, I've been a pretty big fan of GLPs. Um, I think, you know, the, the cuts I kind of I kind of deal with. You know, one of my favorite blends is Piccadilly, GLPs Piccadilly. Um, you know, this is a GLPs, you know, it's a GLPs um, developed blend produced by Cornell and Deal, obviously, like all the GLPs and stuff pretty much, but... Um, 
yeah, Piccadilly is one of my favorites. I deal with the cut on that because I like it so much. Um, I like Fillmore. I like Lombard. You know, there's some really, you know, I really like uh, Embarcadero. Uh, so, you know, there's some really good blends in the GLP's line. There's some decent blends in the Cornell and Beal line. I'm just going to keep looking for um, that one that I really like. If someone said you could only buy a Cornell and Deal and you could only buy one blend uh, for the rest of your life and it had to be Cornell and Deal, not GLP, it had to be Cornell and Deal, I would probably go with Exhausted Rooster or Briar Fox, maybe. I was thinking about that today, right before I started the video. I was thinking... And I think that out of Cornell, out of everything I've tried in Cornell and Deal, I think those two are probably my favorite. But Sunday Picnic's kind of up there too, because Sunday Picnic's very similar to uh, uh, Embarcadero, in my opinion. So, anyway, leave a comment or head uh, leave a, leave a comment, head to Instagram, whatever. Uh, let me know that you're interested in it, and then I'll pick someone at random. And we'll get your information, and I will send it out to you. Uh, shipping on me, obviously, no problem. I would like to see it go to someone who either uh, hasn't tried it in a long time, wants to retry it, has never tried it, um, or something like that. So, uh, anyway, that's probably going to be it. I don't know how long this video is. Sorry for the ramble. Hopefully, you get something good out of it. I don't like to harp on you know companies um you know I, I don't like to harp on companies if i don't you know uh if i don't feel like it's warranted uh i don't know if it's warranted here or not obviously people like this blend though so i shouldn't feel that bad about it because it's got hundreds of reviews on tobacco reviews.com and i think most i think probably almost all of them disagree with me so there you go you um, have both sides of the coin. So, uh, I think until next time, uh, that's pretty much it. All right. Adios.